Let's speak now to Gareth Dennis, who's a rail engineer and writer. And good morning and welcome to BBC News. I'm assuming that you're no clearer as to what happened than, than John or anybody else. But uh, this was clearly a very serious incident. What's your first thought? Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, my first thought was, you know, the same as anyone who, who anyone who's in the rail industry. As soon as you hear about a collision between two trains, you, you fear the worst. And so hearing, and we don't know how serious some of those injuries are, but it sounds like they're not too serious. Very, very grateful that no one has been, you know, more seriously injured or worse. So, yeah, absolutely, uh, real, real worry. And then, of course, the thoughts of, right, well, what, you know, why, why has this happened? So what are your thoughts in terms of the first train? Can we, can we say for certain, do you think, that it struck something on the track? Not really. At, at this point, you know, they, they've, the, 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 the official reports have talked about something causing that train or, or part of that train to derail. But actually, it, particularly given that it's quite a constrained site, you know, you've got that tunnel there and the two tracks kind of meeting. It's very difficult to know exactly what the sequence of events is. Hopefully today or perhaps tomorrow we'll have an official statement, which will probably set out some of the, the chronology of what happened, you know, the order of, of which things happened and, and maybe a bit more detail about what caused that derailment. But what we can do is is be aware of the kind of the increasing risk we've got of of think you know your piece alluded to um landslides you know, the, the the risk from from debris falling onto the track as a result of, of kind of uh, often as a result of extreme weather events now these are the sorts of events that are happening more frequently so whether that's related to this incident remains to be seen but we do know as engineers we know that we are having to deal with an increasing number of these sorts of events and that's because of climate change. We're having more of these extreme weather events, more extreme rainfall, and actually in the summer, more extreme droughts that, if you like, increase the risk that you then have a, a damaged earthwork. So the, the kind of the, the, the soil around the railway can slip and cause, uh, and cause a derailment. So, yeah, it is something that we have to think about. Let's also have a think about the second train and the lack of warning given to that. Um, rather than speaking about this specific case, let's perhaps speak a little bit more generally. I suppose in normal circumstances, if a train does derail, how much warning is given to other trains and how does that work? So there are a few different ways in which uh, signalling systems can, can warn trains. So one of them is if the signal equipment next to the track, you know, you have cables next to the track, if that's damaged, for example, you know, meaning that signals turn, generally signals will fail, they will turn red immediately. So that, that's a fail safe. But even if power is cut to those signals so that they turn off and there's no light at all, drivers are trained to treat that as a red light. So if there's no, if, if they're expecting to see a green, an amber or a red, but they don't see anything, they'll treat that as a red light and they will stop. There are other systems as well. So, for example, if a, tr if a driver has the ability to, uh, you know, if the driver is still able to, to have control of the vehicle, there's a button they can basically press that puts out a big beep and all the drivers will then apply the emergency brakes when they see that warning. So there are a few, a few systems available. So um, at quite why then we've had this, this collision remains to be seen and understand exactly why that's happened. But it, it's worth reiterating that, that the that, that signaling systems to protect our railway are fail safe generally. We must leave it there, Gareth. Dennis. Um, really good to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks.